Friday, it's 6. As you can tell, we got a lot of shit in today. So, not a lot of talking, just a lot of work getting done. Let's start. Thank you. 
there we had it, day six. Uh, <laughs> I realized a lot of the video is focused on the block itself, but I actually was able to complete a lot of the work on the cylinder head today as well. And since I got so busy doing that, I didn't have much time to stop and take video of it and whatnot, so I might as well talk about it. Well, let's hear it. Basically, <clears throat> the cylinder head comes. There. The cylinder head comes pretty much bare. You already get your valves and your springs in there, but you don't get your, your rocker shafts or anything. And the funny thing about this stuff is, Normally what you have to do with these rocker shafts is you have to, when you remove them or reinstall them, you use a rubber band or something silly to kind of press them together. Otherwise, you get something like this. <laughs> when the uh, VTEC pins stick out and cause all kinds of heck, chaos and mayhem. But, when you buy this thing new, each of these um, rocker shafts has a dial pin already inside of it. And the tops of these guys, right up here, have a brace that are as one solid piece. And literally, as you put these things in, you slide the rocker shaft through, it knocks out the dial pin inside of them, you loosen the bolts, pop it off. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really kind of convenient system. I'll make sure to kind of show that in the picture or something as I talk about this, but yeah, it was really, really kind of cool. I mean. You just look at these castings and you just sort of wonder and just amazement. It's just a really amazing piece of <laughs> engineering. So, this guy's more or less ready to go. Tomorrow, maybe, we'll put on our cylinder head and torque it down. Um, the next batch of parts we're getting. Uh, there we go. The next batch of, batch of parts we're getting are things like intake manifold. Uh, some of the water pipe and other sensors on top of the uh, well, head, cylinder head itself, the valve covers, spark wires, that kind of stuff. And um, as soon as those things come in, this motor is more or less ready to, to drop in. I mean, it's a really, really amazing thing to be able to work on a motor that's, that's this new because you don't get dirty, you don't get slimy, you don't get all worked up over it and things literally just go in by the book as if as if they're meant to go that way and you can literally just sit down go at it part by part by part and build yourself an engine I mean, if if you have the opportunity to be able to do this you can find one of these blocks or whether it's a GSR block B16 block whatever if you can buy yourself a crate motor like this and work on it I mean it's it's really something special. So, that is that with the block. That's that with the head. Uh, interesting thing for people about these camshafts, we don't know about them. Sorry for the segue. As you may or may not know, aftermarket camshafts are, they used to be billet aluminum way back in the day, but obviously that didn't last long enough and they broke and companies switch to a like, sort of a chill cast iron design. But the factory camshafts are steel. And aside from Honda and Spoon, no one else makes steel camshafts. And people who have aftermarket camshafts might notice this, but when I've looked at other camshafts that have been cast from a variety of brands, while I've never had any problems with them breaking, I've always noticed you know, on sort of the ridges of the lobes or parts of the ramp. Little scuffs or chips or things like that. And like I said, it never has caused any problem with the motor, you know, messing up. But just to kind of go the fit and finish of these things, I mean, every single lobe is perfect. And because it's steel, because it's not going to rust the moment it gets the air, it's not covered in that kind of, you know, greasy, slimy stuff that your rotors or your iron bits and pieces of motor have become in. It's literally, you go take a thing out of, the, out of the bag and it's ready to go. Um, since this is actually a 2000 or 2001 spec US, US engine, even though the, the head was cast in 2005, figure that out. Um, they did change the 
uh, camshaft to these motors very slightly. The 2000 and 2001 spec US Type R's have a double ridge up here. And while they're not exactly the same as the Civic Type R cams, the ones that are sort of known to be the, the most extreme of factory camshafts, they are really, really, really close. They're not exactly the same grind, but they might as well be the same. I mean, so yeah, if you can find these camshafts, they are definitely worth every, every ounce of sweat and, and tears to get them, every dollar, every penny spent, they are really in a league of their own. And it'll really start to show when we put this thing together. So, day six, and we almost have a fully rotating assembly. Stay tuned, tomorrow, things are crazy. That's going on. Maybe I should do a video of when I get this thing smogged. Wouldn't that be funny? Bring this to the referee and see what he says, or she says. Make sure if we have a receipt stacked this thick of everything owned in case the guy freaks out that it's stolen. <laughs> I honestly think the, the, the ref will, have, will be completely baffled by this and not believe that someone actually went to all this trouble. I feel bad for the guys at Acura that had to go through and get all the, the random bolts and, and little seals. Someone over in like the Acura warehouse, you know, distribution center is probably hating on us right now for... I mean, if you could see this on a map, you would probably see all these bits and pieces from across the country kind of funneling towards, you know, our, our own one lonely shop and... I don't know. I'm glad not to worry about it. <laughs> I'm glad the parts just arrived. So, that's day six. Stay tuned for day seven.